Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. Happy Resurrection Day. I just need a witness from uh, someone in the chat window that you can hear me. Uh, hey, Wes, can you hear me? Hey, Ryan, can you hear me? Give me a sign if you can. All right. Glory be to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And it's Easter, everybody. It is Easter Day, Easter Sunday. We call it Resurrection Sunday because this is the day in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. Praise God. This is the day Jesus rose from the dead. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter who you are or what's going on in your life or what has happened to you. God loves you and he's already paid the price for your sins. He wants to have fellowship with you. The scripture says that you were fearfully and wonderfully made by him, that you can worship him. And that is Psalm 139, 14. So we want to welcome you all over this nation. We want to welcome our friends in other nations who are looking on live today. And we want to welcome all of you who will visit this ministry via the tape, the recording that we put online um, in a few more hours. But we just bless God. Thank God for this beautiful day. We're here in Lithonia, Georgia. Beautiful Lithonia, Georgia where the pollen is kicking, the pollen is kicking, eyes are itching, noses are running, but Jesus Christ is Lord, hallelujah. So we pray that you will gather your family around today and for the next 45 minutes, let's hear some word, let's fellowship together, and then uh, let's rejoice in this day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We praise God, we praise God, we thank God. Every day is a blessing, every day is a blessing. I'm so blessed to be alive and online with you, celebrating, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We celebrate, ladies and gentlemen, Christians celebrate the risen Savior. Our God is not dead. He's not in the grave. He is alive. Ladies and gentlemen, we are believers. We follow Jesus Christ, and we are so happy because our God died on the cross for us. He laid dead for three days. He arose on the third day with all power in his hands. The grave could not hold him. Death could not keep him. And he said to us, behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom of God. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He's given us kingdom authority, exousia. He's given us power. So no matter what your situation is, no matter what your circumstances are, you have the victory. You might be broke, busted, and disgusted right now. You may not have money to pay your bills or to pay your rent. You may not have food. You may not have this or that, but you have Jesus. We give a shout out to Tammy Nichols, in Ohio, we give a shout out to Matt Borland in Erie, Erie, Pennsylvania. We give a shout out to our friends in Kenya, Tanzania. We give a shout out to all of our friends all across America. We give a shout out to the Facebook family where you can come to church live on the Back to Basics uh, Ministries Incorporated page and get the word of God. God is so much in love with us and he wants all of us to have access to him, that he makes the online church possible for anyone who cannot make it to church, anyone who cannot attend church, 
Everybody does not attend the brick and mortar church, but God loves you so much. He has raised up ministries like this one to reach you wherever you are. You can approach us via iPad, iPhone, cell phone, or online. And we just bless God. You can also uh, get this ministry via the video. So God has made a way that no one needs to say, I can't go to church. I can't get the word. Yes, you can. We bring the word to you. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even the bone and the marrow. Uh, the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So there is no excuse for people not hearing the word. We want you to invite people whom you know who don't go to church uh, uh, to tune in to the online church every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock Eastern time or daylight saving time. We want to invite you to invite others. You see, the world is winding up. The world is winding up. We must preach this gospel. We must share the testimony of Jesus Christ with the world. Ladies and gentlemen, people are dying every day. Many are dying without a knowledge of Jesus Christ. Many are dying in their sinful conditions. And, and God wants people to turn to him. Turn to him. Turn while there is still time. Turn. Some people say, well, it's too late for me. I've been a sinner for too long. Oh, no, no, no. Jesus uh, rescued a, a sinner, a thief on the cross. At the midnight hour, Jesus told him, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Now, if Jesus can save a, a thief on the cross at the midnight hour, he can save you. There is nothing uh, too far gone that cannot bring you to Jesus Christ. So this day, the scripture says, if you hear my voice, Harden not your heart as in the provocation. Don't be so proud. Don't be puffed up. I know there are some of you, you just don't go to church. You're fed up with the church. You're frustrated. Look, hey, I share your frustrations. I'll tell you, and I'll make a confession. Easter is not my best day. Easter Sunday is not my best day. Easter Sunday is the day where I see a lot of people go to church. They go to church on uh Easter and Mother's Day and Christmas. And Easter is hard on pastors because you got a lot of people there. They've got their fine clothes on, they're showing off, they're parading, they want to be seen. And it's hard for pastors to preach because pastors have to deal with all that riffraff going on in the church. So Easter is not my best day. Easter is the day where I've got to pray even more. I've got to pray even more to preach. I've got to pray that I preach with love in my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen over my over the years, many people come to church on Easter and you don't see them again. You don't see them again until Christmas. They won't support you. They won't support the church. They won't tithe. They only call you when they need something. So Easter is not a good day for a lot of pastors. I struggle with Easter. I, I struggle. Lord, help me to walk in love. Lord God, help me. to. And the Lord just delivered me this morning from that burden of Easter and the frustration that many pastors have uh, because we see people come to church who, who don't know about church. They talk out loud. They on, they're on their cell phones in church. They don't know uh, uh, how to conduct themselves in church. And church services are interrupted because people who don't know Jesus come because it's a religious thing. My mama went to church on Easter. My grandmama took me to church on Easter. And people come as though something magical is going to happen, as though if they show up, something magical is going to happen, and they're going to be snatched from the life of sin and, and just change uh, in a magical moment. So we've got to love one another. And God delivered me. God said, son, your job is not to change anybody in the church. You can't change a single person. You can't even make people go to church. He said, your job is not to try to get as many likes on Facebook as you can. Your job is not to try to influence people. Your job is not to try to get them to like you or to come to church or to come to the online church. You just preach the gospel. Just preach the gospel and preach it with love in your heart. And so that's what I do. I preach the gospel 
and I, I let the Holy Spirit do his work. I'm not going to try to play God or play Holy Spirit and try to get you saved. I can't get you saved, but I can preach the word of God and tell you about God's love and show you the way. Because the word of God says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light and unto my path. So I'm going to show you the, the, the path. I will show you through the word of God, the path that you must walk. And I've got to walk that same walk. Preachers have to say, walk that same walk because we preach the gospel. Doesn't mean that we're, we're better than anybody else. No, we've got to honor God and, and obey him too. And, and God has made a way. He's made a way, ladies and gentlemen, that all can be saved. There's no excuse for anybody living and who can hear this message. There is no excuse for going to hell. There is no excuse. Well, you don't know what they did to me back in 1968. No, I don't know, and I don't want to know, but I do know this. Jesus has already taken care of that situation, and if you repent for bitterness in your heart and forgive those who hurt you, God will save you. So we praise God. We welcome you to the Worship Where I Am Church, the Back to Basics Ministries Online Church. We just call it the Online Church, and we thank God. We're live on Facebook. We're live on, on Go to Meet Me. We are live, and the Word of God is going forth. So for the next 30 minutes, we just want you to uh, fellowship with us, worship with us, um, turn the TV off, just focus on the word of God. Let this word work mightily in your heart. Let this word do wonders. See, God says his word will not return unto him void or empty. So I've got a message for you. I'm going to share it with you. And I trust the Holy Spirit. I trust the Holy Spirit to bless your heart. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this day. This is the day that we declare uh, resurrection day. We celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we know you're alive every day, Lord Jesus. You're alive forevermore. We just come together as a body, the body of Christ, and give praises and worship and honor to you for raising yourself from the dead, for purchasing our redemption, and for shedding your love upon all mankind so that all can be saved. And so, Father, we just ask that you stretch forth your mighty hand across this nation and across the nations and bless people. Lord, raise them up from their situations. Give them hope, Lord. Help them to put their trust in you. Save souls, God. Heal and deliver. Set people free. We know many people have issues and challenges, but we know that you have the answer. And so we present you to them, Lord Jesus, and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, praise God. Praise God. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Today, we want to go back to Ezekiel chapter 37. That's where we were last week. Ezekiel chapter 37. We're just going to revisit Ezekiel 37. Then we're going to look at uh, Romans chapter 6. Oh, it's, it's going to be a resurrection message. But it's not going to be your traditional resurrection message. I'm not going to turn to one of the Gospels and, 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 and preach from the traditional message you hear from the Gospels when Mary Magdalene and, and the other women went to the tomb and found that it was empty. No, you've heard that story. But let's just take a different approach. Amen. Praise God. Let's take the approach that God has given us for the online church today. Let's return to Ezekiel chapter 37, and the word of God says, to summarize that word, Ezekiel was caught up in the Holy Ghost, and God took him to the valley of dry bones. Uh, Ezekiel said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Ladies and gentlemen, that valley was full of bones, dead bones, dry bones. They were very dry. They were very dead. And as we um, mentioned last week, these bones represented Israel, the people of God. 
And then we went on to uh, represent these bones, these dead bones as being the church, the church in America, the church in England, the church in your nation. These dry bones represent the church. The church today is scattered all over America. We have all kinds of denominations, all kinds of approaches to Jesus. We got all kinds of pastors, all kinds of ministries. The church uh, uh, is, is scattered. Very few people cooperate. There's a need for a spirit of cooperation among the, the church. There's a need for koinonia, which is a word for fellowship. And so the church is scattered. You've got the toe bones over there. You know, the Methodists over there. You know, they think they know more than the Baptists. Then you've got the Baptists, the ankle bones over there. The Methodists don't associate with the Baptists. Then you've got the Lutherans over here and the Episcopalians over here. Then you've got the Catholics over here. And then you've got the CMEs over here. And then you've got uh, the Pentecostals over here. You've got the, par the Charismatics. The, the neck bone won't associate with the ankle bone and the ankle bone won't associate with the toe bone and the toe bone is too proud to look up to the, the, the skull bone and the skull bone doesn't want anything to do with the thigh bone and that's the church ladies and gentlemen and everybody thinks they have the right way to God but there's no spirit of cooperation ladies and gentlemen the body, we are the body of Christ. We're not the toe bones for Jesus. We're not the neck bones for Jesus. We're not the back bones for Jesus. We're the body of Christ. He left us here to complete his work, to spread the good news throughout the whole earth that he is alive and he's coming back again. But what do we have? What do we have, ladies and gentlemen? We've got the church just like Ezekiel saw a valley of dry bones, bones that should have been connected to one another, scattered, scattered, disconnected. We've got bones that don't even want to be a part of the body. We've got uh, churches where if you walk in, people look at you and they look at you cockeyed and Look at you that like you don't belong here. We don't want you. here. We got the black church. We got the white church. We've got a uh, uh, mistrust among blacks and whites. We've got the Hispanic church. We've got the uh, the Asian church. And, and nobody wants to fellowship one another with one another because we don't trust one another. Uh, e even there's hatred and, and lack of love among uh, people who call themselves Christians, the body of Christ. There should be no schism in the church there should be no lack of love in the church there should be no mistrust but ladies and gentlemen realistically there are pastors you can't trust there are church members you can't trust there there are some pastors you can't even trust your children around them there are some pastors you can't even trust your wife around them ladies and gentlemen we're living in an age where people have taken their eyes off jesus People are playing church, and they know how to do church. Oh, we had church today, they say. We had church, or let's do church. Let's let's rock this joint, they say. And ladies and gentlemen, they have taken their eyes off God, and there's no reverence for God, no, no respect for the Lord. And so God has a, a calling on us. The Holy Spirit is knocking on your door. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any person hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in with him and sup with him. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a long way to go. We've got the political church. We've got the Republican church. And, and we've got the evangelicals. The evangelicals, uh, they will... The evangelicals will support this president no matter what. They're going to go down the tube with him with his lies. He he's a, he's adding lie upon lie upon lie upon lie. And we've got these evangelicals, big name pastors all over this nation who are afraid to speak up about the corruption in Washington D.C. They're afraid. They're afraid. They want to be politically correct. Why? Because that dinero, dinero, the money, they want to be supported. They don't want to lose their, their, their support. But ladies and gentlemen, God is going to hold you evangelicals responsible for not preaching the gospel. God is going to hold you responsible for kissing up to the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. 
God is going to hold you responsible for being a wimp, for being a punk, and not saying what thus saith the Lord. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the church today is like what Ezekiel saw in the valley, dry bones. The Baptists are over here, first Baptist, second Baptist, third Baptist. In, in San Francisco, I've got a friend, he pastors fifth Baptist church. That means there were five Baptist congregations that could not get along with one another. Then you got greater, uh, 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 you got deliverance, then greater deliverance, then, then uh, the church, a uh, uh, first church, then the second church. Ladies and gentlemen, all these names which describe that we can't get along with one another, we ought to start getting along with one another. My subject today is rise up, get up. You don't have to lay there. My subject today is rise up, get up. You don't have to lay there. The spirit of the Lord uh, spoke to Ezekiel and says, son of man, can these bones live? Can the toe bone connect to the ankle bone? Can the ankle bone connect to the heel bone? Can the heel bone connect to the uh, leg bone? Can the leg bone connect to the knee bone? Can the knee bone connect to the thigh bone and then to the hip bone, to the back bone? Can these bones live? Can they connect together first of all? Can they live? And Ezekiel said, thou knowest, Lord. And Ezekiel said, Lord, you know it's right. You know it. You know they can connect. And I'm asking you today, in the name of the Lord, can the Methodists connect with the Baptists can the Baptists connect with the Lutherans? Can the Lutherans connect with the Pentecostals? Can the Pentecostals uh, connect with the Evangelicals? Can the so-called Christians connect and love one another and put away those discrepancies and, and, and those uh, deviant things that prevent them from loving one another? Can we connect? Can we connect and be apolitical, leave politics out of it? Can we connect? in the spirit of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, can we connect? And so that's the issue today, the issue today. And God spoke to Ezekiel and said, prophesy to the bones, preach to those bones. And Ezekiel preached to the bones and bones connected with bones and, and skeletons were formed and they had no muscle on them. God said, prophesy to the bones. God told the man of God, preach to the bones. He preached again and muscles came on the bones and then a flesh on the muscles and then skin over the flesh. And then you had bodies, bodies, resurrected bodies, ladies and gentlemen, resurrected bodies from dead bones. There were resurrected bodies. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a type of Jesus Christ who would die and he would be resurrected under his by his own power. Jesus Christ died on the cross, ladies and gentlemen. He was buried in the tomb. He was dead. There was no life in him. But on the third day, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost entered his body and he was risen again. He became alive again and he lives forevermore. Ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus can rise up from the dead, these dry bones, these dry Methodists, these dead Baptists, these uh, critical Catholics, these uh, 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 Lutherans who look down on one another, these Episcopalians who think they're higher than everyone else, these evangelicals who think they know more than anyone else. If Jesus can rise from the dead, we can put aside all these sinful things about us and we can repent and we can live as the body of Christ, not only in America, but in every nation, in every nation. So the church can rise up, ladies and gentlemen. The church can rise up and take the nation for Jesus. The church in America can rise up and take the nation for Jesus. I don't mean take the nation for the Republican Party. I don't mean take the nation for the Democrats. I don't mean take the nation for the independents, but take this nation for Jesus because a lot of Republicans are gonna bust hell wide open. A lot of Democrats are gonna bust hell wide open. A lot of uh, leaders have put political party and politics before Jesus. But I'm saying to you, repent, repent.
call upon the name of the Lord while he may while he may be found. Call upon the Lord. It is not too late, America, to repent. God is calling America to repentance. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. I'll heal their land. Put aside those petty differences. Put aside the prejudice. Put aside the racism. Ladies and gentlemen, I rarely hear, I very rarely hear a white preacher preach about racism. I very rarely hear a white preacher preach about racism. I very rarely hear a black preacher preach about racism. This racism thing is crippling the church. It's crippling the nation. This racism thing, white racism, black racism, we need to repent. How can you worship God and have racism in your heart? How can you worship God, say you love Jesus and hate white people? How can you uh, uh, worship God and have a hatred against black people, ladies and gentlemen? And how can you call yourself a preacher? How can you call yourself a Christian if you're too scared to speak up against racism in your household and in your family and on your job? Ladies and gentlemen, if you're quiet, then you agree with it. If you're scared to open your mouth, then you agree with all the, 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 all the ugliness that's going on around you. God is calling people to rise up, rise up, get up. You don't have to lay there. You don't have to lay there and let your household be a racist household. You don't have to lay there and listen to your family talk about how they hate blacks or how they hate whites. You don't have to lay there and hear your family talk about hatred and how they can't stand this person or can't stand. You can rise up. You don't have to stay there. You can get up. You can move out. You don't have to lay there and be a part of it. But the sad thing is, if you lay there and say nothing, then you're in agreement. Well, I don't want to rock the boat. After all, I don't pay any rent here and I'm living here free. Oh, and in other words, you're going to go to hell with your family because you're afraid to stand up for Jesus. That is pathetic. Repent, repent. This day, the Lord said, if you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Don't get mad at Pastor Carter because he's preaching. He's telling you what's right. Don't throw rocks at the postman. This day, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. This day, let this day be the day you're going to stop being a racist. Let, let this day be the day you're going to stop hating black people. Let this day be the day you're going to stop hating white people. Let this day be the day you're going to stop hating Republicans. Let this day be the day you're going to stop hating Democrats. Let this day be the day you're going to let love flow from your heart. Let this day be the day you're going to call on the name of Jesus and receive the Holy Ghost and ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life and help you to rise up to where you ought to be. Let this day be the day you're going to get up from out of your pit of anger, frustration, and bitterness. All across this nation and the nations, there are bitter people, angry people, mean people. They can't say anything good about anybody. Yet they're in church right now. They're in church right now saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, let this day be the day you stop being a hypocrite. Let this day be the day you get real for Jesus. Let this day be the day you're going to ask the Lord to help you to walk in love. Let this day be the day you put away all bitterness and hatred and anger. Let this day be the day you connect with Jesus through the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I repent. Lord, I repent. Let this day be the day you confess bitterness in your heart. Lord, I've been carrying bitterness in my heart towards white people or towards black people, or towards cops. Lord, this is a, a, God, I confess I've been carrying bitterness in my heart towards my wife, or toward my husband, or toward my mother, or toward my father. Lord, this is the day that I'm asked that you deliver me. I repent of bitterness. And then ask God, God, help me, help me, help me to walk in love. Fill me with your love. And ladies and gentlemen, the love comes when you receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Let this day be the day, and I know I'm talking to people, you've been a Christian for 35, 40 years. Let this day be the day you repent for harboring bitterness in your heart. You know that you know that you, you know 
you can't stand Sister Sally, who sits on that first pew in the church. Let this day be the day you forgive Sister Sally. Let this day be the day that you forgive her family. Let this day be the day you forgive the president. Let this day be the day you forgive the congressman. Let this day be the day you forgive yourself. Let this day be the day you forgive the man who stole your wife. Let this day be the day you forgive the drug dealer who stole your child. Let this day be the day you forgive and say, I'm going to walk in love and I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit to breathe on me and fill me with his presence. Let's go back to that valley of dry bones. God said, son of man, can these bones live? And the bones had connected. They were standing up. They were all connected. The skull bone was connected to the neck bone, the neck bone to the shoulder bone, shoulder bone to the backbone, the backbone to the sternum, the uh, backbone to the hip bone, the backbone to the thigh, the hip bone to the thigh bone. The, the, the bones had connected. Ladies and gentlemen, the church can connect. The church can connect with one another. And then the Lord said, son of man, prophesy to the four winds. Command the winds to breathe the breath of God on these dry bones. And the man of God, Ezekiel, prophesied. He preached to the winds and commanded the winds to breathe the spirit of God upon the dry bones. And God's spirit entered those dry bones and those bodies came alive. According to scripture, those bodies came alive into a mighty army of God, hallelujah, a mighty army of God. And I say to you today, wherever you are, prophesy, prophesy to the church, prophesy to the dry bones, prophesy to the Baptists, prophesy to the Methodists, prophesy to the independents, prophesy to the Catholics, prophesy to uh, the, the evangelicals, prophesy to the White House, prophesy to your own house and say, dry bones, I command that you live in the name of Jesus. Call the breath of God. Call the breath of God. Command the breath of God to breathe on these dry bones. If, if these dry bones claim to be Christians, then they ought to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and be not drunk with wine <clears throat> in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I have kingdom authority. We have kingdom authority. We can prophesy to our own household. We can command that our household get right with God. We can speak to our family in the name of Jesus. We do it in love. We do it with authority. We can command that our children stop doing drugs. We can command that husbands stop cheating on wives. We can command that wives stop cheating on husbands. We command that racism leave the hearts of our, our family. We can command that these dry bones get up. And live. We can command that First Baptist fellowship with Second Baptist. We can command that uh, the charismatics uh, celebrate with the fundamentalists. We can command the love of Jesus Christ to flow from heart to heart. Prophesy, prophesy. Ladies and gentlemen, some of these preachers are preaching their own sermons, their own ideas, their own essays. Preach the word of God, preacher. Preach the word of God. Don't be afraid to preach the word of God. Well, some, well, pastor, you know, they pay my, my salary. They don't want me to preach about adultery. Well, punk, you ought to get out of the pulpit. You ought to quit. You ought to get out of the pulpit. You're just a punk. Get out of the pulpit. Preach what God gives you to preach and be bold. Be bold in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to give an account to God. We've got to give an account for God. Did you do what I sent you to do? Did you preach what I called you to preach? Did you say to your family what I told you to say to them? Oh, but I was afraid. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to have to face God and say, uh, I was afraid to preach to him, Lord, because the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me. I never knew you. But preacher, you don't know how much money I give to my church. Depart from me. I never knew you. Obey the Lord. You don't have to be a dry bone sitting up in a dead church listening to your preacher talk about blacks. You don't have to sit up in a church like some some people in throughout America uh, 
prior to the last election, listening to their pastor call Obama the Antichrist, you could have gotten up out of there. Now you're stuck. You're stuck with that pastor. And I'm looking at one pastor right now. He's he's eating cheese every day because he's the one who led this nation calling Obama the Antichrist. Now he's got to repent. He's got to repent because now you got somebody worse than what you had before in there. And you're, and, but this preacher won't open his mouth. He's too blessed, God scared. He doesn't want to lose his followers. Be real, people. Be real. Be real. Be real. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Stop being afraid. Rise up. Get up out of the pit. You don't have to stay in that valley of dry bones. You don't have to stay in that valley of criticism. You don't have to remain in that valley of hypocrisy. You don't have to remain in that valley of unbelief. You can be saved today. You can be delivered. You don't have to stay in that valley of sickness and death. You can be saved. You can be delivered. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, David encouraged himself in the Lord. We find in, in the scripture, 1 Samuel 31, when his family was carried away and the families of his soldiers were carried away by the Amalekites at Ziklag, David went before the Lord and said, Lord, shall I pursue? And the Lord said, yes, pursue. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He took the ephod and he uh, uh, had the priest pray for him. And he said, Lord, Lord, uh, when I pursue, will I be successful? Yes, you'll be successful. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to call upon the Lord and say, Lord, I hate being in this situation I'm in. I hate being a hypocrite. I hate being a liar. I hate being a wimp. I hate being a spiritual punk. I hate being who I am. Lord, Lord, I hate uh, not saying, speaking up on my job. I hate not being able to speak up in my household. I hate uh, being afraid of my children. I hate being afraid of my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to stay there. You can rise up. You can get up. Well, they'll put me out of the house. Where will I live? <clears throat> rise up. Get up. God's got better houses. Cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. God is waiting on you to take a stand. God is waiting on you to make up your mind. God is waiting on you to be like Popeye the sailor. Popeye, Popeye the sailor said, that's all I can stands. I can stands no more. And you don't have to pop a mouthful of spinach, ladies and gentlemen. You can get filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't have to pop a mouthful of spinach. I'm going to say that again, Tammy Nichols. You can get filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will help you to rise up. When God sees your heart is determined and your trust is in the Lord and you're not trusting in uh, politicians, you're not trusting in your money, your bank account, you're not trusting in your husband or your children, your trust is in the Lord. When God sees your trust is in the Lord, he will raise you up, ladies and gentlemen. He will raise you up. The word of God said, I've never seen any man forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. So let us stop making these excuses. Let us stop laying around doing nothing. Let us stop laying around having a pity me party. Let us stop being dry, very dry. Let us get some lubrication in us. Let us get some life in us. If you say you're a Christian, you ought to be lively. You ought to have some joy. Ladies and gentlemen, I see so many Christians have no joy, but they call themselves follower of Christ. The Bible says, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to be around some joy people. I want to see some people filled with joy. I want to see people leave the church today excited, saying, he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. I want to see them take this to their jobs tomorrow. I want to see this see them take this across the nation. I don't want to see them burn out by Tuesday and forget that Jesus is alive. I want to see them letting the Holy Ghost rise up in them like rivers of living water every day, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have to be dry, ladies and gentlemen. We can be alive. The Bible says oh, the Holy Ghost rises up in us like rivers of living water. You've got to learn how to release the living waters inside of you. You've got to learn how to release 
the living waters inside of you. Call upon the name of the Lord. Ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. So many Christians are ignorant of the Holy Ghost. Well, read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 to 14. Read and study that word. Read what Galatians has to say about the Holy Spirit. Then be filled. Read Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 4, how the apostles went uh, not in their own power, but in the power of the Holy Ghost. Read the Bible and appropriate it to yourself and call upon the name of the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to come and take up residence in you. Fill me, Holy Ghost. Fill me, Holy Ghost. Fill me, Holy Ghost. Learn how to mortify the deeds of the flesh and to trust in the Holy Spirit. Learn how to get the word of God in you. And when it comes time for you to speak, you'll speak God's word. You'll put, put God's word on that situation. And in the name of Jesus, demons will flee. Demons will flee when you put the word of God on your household. Demons will flee when you take the word of God on your job. Oh, I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. When you let the Holy Spirit rise up in you, Facebook family, let the Holy Ghost rise up in you. You can have the Holy Ghost in you. You can have the power of God. Hallelujah. God is no respecter of persons. He wants all his people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can walk in victory. You can walk in victory. Jesus got up from the dead. He got up from the dead, ladies and gentlemen. He rose from the dead. He said, all power is in my hands. All power is in my hands. He said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Then when we turn over to Romans chapter six, Romans chapter six, here's a word for you who, who are, or, are, are still committing sin, still living in adultery, still living in homosexuality, still living in lesbianism, still cheating, still lying, still drinking, still smoking reefer, still popping pills, hooked on uh, 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 pills, hooked on somebody else's wife, hooked on money. You can be delivered. You can be delivered. The scripture says in Romans chapter six, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? Ladies and gentlemen, God challenges you with your word. How can we Christians who are dead to sin continue to live in sin? The Bible says in, in uh, Ephesians, thou art without, without Romans, thou art without excuse, O oh man. Thou art inexcusable. There's no excuse for continuing to live in sin. You can rise up. You can get up out of it. You can leave it. You don't have to lay there. You don't have to be a prisoner to somebody's wife. You don't have to be a prisoner to some preacher. You don't have to be a prisoner to money. You don't have to be a prisoner in your own household. You can rise up, ladies and gentlemen. You can rise up, ladies and gentlemen. You can rise up. Greater is he in us than he that's in the world. That's what the word says in 1 John. Greater is he in us than he that's in the world. Call on the name of the Lord. Call on the Holy Ghost. You say you're a Christian, call on the power. Get filled with the power. Stop being a Christian wimp. Stop going around uh, letting every wind that blows blow you off course. Stop uh, being a, a victim of, of everything the devil sends down the road. You don't have to buy his package. You can take authority over him. Jesus has given you exosia. He's given you authority. He rose from the dead with all power in his hands, ladies and gentlemen. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. And God has given that same power to us. Jesus has given us this same authority. Romans 6, 4 says that as Christ was raised up from the dead, even so ought we to walk in newness of life. As Christ was raised up, from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so ought we to walk in newness of life. You can walk in newness of life. You can be changed today in the twinkling of an eye. Your situation can change overnight. It's all contingent upon your attitude. We walk by faith, not by sight. Some of you say, well, I'll never get out of this. No way, you just sealed your own doom. 
But if you change what you say, if you change what you say and let your word speak life, I'm getting out of this because I'm going to trust in the Lord. I put my trust in the Lord. I'm getting out of this dead church. I'm going to find a place where Jesus Christ is glorified. I'm going to find a church where uh, saints are edifying one another. I'm going to go where the word is live. I'm going to go where the Holy Ghost is in operation. I'm going to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to learn how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm not going to be afraid of the Holy Ghost. I know Jesus sent him to help me. And so I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come in. Breathe on me, God. Breathe on me, God. I confess I'm a dry bone. Breathe on me. I command the four winds to blow the breath of God on me. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I speak this to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up. Rise up. Get up from where you are. I command that your bodies be healed. I command that you be delivered. In the name of Jesus, oh God, breathe your breath upon every listener. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to every dry bone under the sound of my voice. Breathe on them. Holy Ghost, fill them. Fill them. And at the same time, fill me again. Fill me again. Fill us with your spirit, Lord God, that we may rise up and be the people of God you're calling for in these last and evil days. Father, we praise you. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We receive you by faith. We receive you by faith. We expect, we expect you to do wonders in our lives. Praise God. We expect you to fill us, rise up in us like rivers of living water. Praise God. We expect our bodies to be healed. We expect to, demons to be cast out in the name of Jesus. We're expecting God because our trust is in Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is risen, no matter what people say. Hallelujah. He lives. He lives. He lives. We don't serve a dead God. Our God is alive, and he's alive in us. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I speak life into myself. I speak life into your people. Life comes from you, Lord Jesus. You said, I'm come that we might have life, that we might have it abundantly. Give us that life, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, rise up in us, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this message. We pray that souls will be saved today, that when people hear this message, if they're not saved, they will receive Jesus Christ by faith. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that if anyone hearing this message is sick in their body, that they will be healed by the power of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that if anyone is in need of deliverance, that you would deliver them, Holy Spirit. You are the comforter. And, Lord, we just praise you. We commit this word to you. We thank you. We thank you for uh, the opportunity to preach live on Facebook and on the Go To Me ch channel. And we pray, God, that the anointing will be on the video and on the tape. We praise you. We bless you and honor you. And, God, we love you. We love you. And we love one another. So, Father, forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity. And we thank you and we bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church say amen. amen.